What's good with the YouTube of Convict's Perspective? It's your boy Flacco coming live and direct with Senor Rojo. And as always, man, I'm sliding through with a little bit of energy, man. What's cracking, man? And on today's topic, man, content, we have something that's going to be very interesting, man. Everybody wants to, to ask questions in the comments, you know, when they reach out to us on IG or, or whatnot. Why does the federal faction have such a harsh stance on this end all hostilities? Why is there a green light? being implemented by the NFA in the, in the feds. We came across some information from someone who was present and it goes into a whole timeline of events that will give you viewers the understanding of why the federal NFA faction have such a hard line on this issue. Yeah, this is a nice chronological breakdown of somebody who was present, you know what I mean? Obviously we're not gonna disclose who it is for, for their safety and security, but um, I'll jump right into it, man. This is, this is, this is really, it's really, deep. really explains a lot as to the reason why, you know, the feds aren't, you know, following, you know, the, the model of the state with the with the end of hostilities. But here we go. Uh, let's see. This is about why the NF in feds had a green light on all California MA, California Serenios and California AB. Skip was the first member of Black Widow to enter the feds. He arrived around 04 to Sheridan, Oregon, medium security. Upon arriving to Sheridan, the Serenios who were aware the Serenos were aware of who Skip was and gave the ultimatum, ultimatum telling the Nortenos that the MA has no beef with the Nortenos, only NF, and wanted the homeboys to get rid of Skip. Skip and the homies got off on Serenos with knives and weapons. Skip took the case and received 12 to 14 extra years. Small footnote. I went to Sheridan years later and was placed in shoe for engaging on Sereno. And while in shoe, an independent white boy who was on the yard for 18 years at the time said he was there in Sheridan when the incident happened and it was vicious, blood everywhere and nothing like that had ever happened on that yard before or after that day with Skip. Skip was placed in Pollock, Louisiana, USP. He also put out a mandate for all Norteños to engage on enemies and are no longer to coexist with California MA, California AB, and California Serenios. Only maybe one or two yards listened, and that was it. Skip understood from others, if you keep engaging with a certain group in the feds, they will eventually put a nationwide separation and have 50 states to play to play with and not, have, and not only have safe environments for the Carnales on there, on their way to the feds, but also bring our gente together instead of everyone doing what they want, not functioning parallel with other pintas. Fast forward now to 2007, the Carnal Spider from Sacramento landed in Leavenworth, Kansas, and they also engaged on Serenos, gave them the business. And days later, Happy Cervantes landed in Florence FC, FCI in February of 08. And his second day on the yard gangland episode came on with Happy on it, while everyone was in the rec yard with his face appeared on like six TVs showing he's an F member. All the Serenios in the rec yard looked at the TV, looked at happy, looked at the TV, then looked back at happy again. <laughs> Homies knew there was a problem. Next morning, the Southerners were digging up pieces in the rec yard and passed out care packages to their people. And obviously they were more, most likely to engage on happy. So the brothers and happy set up POA, and had everyone come out at lunch and pairs. Excuse me? For the listeners out there, POA means point of attack. Yes, sir. Everyone came out to lunch in pairs and remained mobile so nobody was grouped up. Once the homies were all accounted for, they went in, in the building with the most influential Serenos slash targets and went in and got them pretty bad. And rumor has it not one, has it not confirmed that one target that was hit was an MA member. The following day in FCI Phoenix, the homies blew the yard up because a homie was singing a song from the GUN album talking about they can kill such and such if you want me to. You know, it's it's a it's a derogatory word that is used for the Southsiders. We don't want to say it because uh, that ain't our cup of tea. But anyway, the 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 noise the the song was about killing the enemy and a southerner heard it reported it to the homies and the homies got at the little homie no big deal the serenios got mad that the homie was still on the yard and tried to push on the homies again so the brother said they already took care of it they said he has to go the homie said okay and then got off on the south siders instead and blew the yard up 
So now the Serenios who got hit in Leavenworth by Spider and them got shipped to reception out in the West Coast in Victorville, California. As California AB, California MA stronghold, the Norten Green put the green light on Nortenos for the Leavenworth incident. So those Serenios got mostly transferred to FCI medium Lompoc. This is the one yard where the Serenios got the better hand of the homies. They woke up at 5.45 a.m. unlock and stabbed the Bulldogs and homies in their building at first door lock. Hey, real quick, you guys, pardon me if this sounds funny. I'm reading this uh, this mandate word for word, you know, this account of the history. So just so you know, man, I'm having trouble as well. It's not that I'm misspeaking or nothing. I'm reading it word for word, and it's not perfect. Okay, so when Skip got his reports in on these matters in July of 08, a new mandate was sent out about the, about the no coexist, and people were finally paying more attention, especially since all new situations were getting ugly. 2009, Bennisville, South Carolina, the homies attacked the Serenios. They life flighted some out there, then close in by Estelle, South Carolina, the brothers engage on the Southsiders, but administration shipped them out. And the administration started noticing what was happening. And at first, when you got off, you sit in the whole pending discipline. Then six to eight weeks after that, you get shipped somewhere else and do the same thing over and over until the administration caught on. We caught on and we already lost all, lost all our yards on the West Coast. Forgive me again, you guys. The only homies on main lines were the ones in USP. Everywhere are the FCI Allenwood. The rest of us were shipped. The rest of us were in shoe, spread out nationwide. Nationwide Administration sent all of us back to California and West Coast shoes. A, na a nationwide separation eventually was placed on us and Serenos. And FCI Mendota was given to us near Fresno. And little by little, we were given a lot of yards for us and all other groups with, with, with whom we are compatible like the Texas Syndicate, Aztecas, the Texas MA, and people who also wore with Serenios, California AB, or California MA. Also on our yard were Bloods, Crips, Gangster Disciples, and Latin Kings. Furthermore, Bulldogs were riding with us in most places, but in 2011, the California MA had a plan. They told SIS, which is the federal government's version of IGI in the state, and SIS told the Bulldogs that California MA said they are welcome to walk the yards with Serenos and California MA. And they did that in attempts to take some numbers away from us. And a lot of Bulldogs did lock it up on us. In 2011, a Bulldog named Bernie took him and his dogs to FCI Lompoc Yard, but not knowing that once they got to the yard in Lompoc, the Serenos told them they are called homies now. They sit by Serenios, and if Serenios go, they have to go. But they can't be barking. They can't have their shirts off working out and all types of other weird restrictions. But it was too late. They abandoned the homies. It was too late. They had already abandoned the homies. A bulldog named Face went out to Lompoc Yard seeing the stipulations put on the bulldog car and got off on Bernie and brought him to the shoe. But Bernie was released back to mainline two days later, of course, but not, not the guy face. Face programmed with the homies. Let me go back to 2008 when Sereno stabbed the homies in Lompoc FCI. The brothers next door in the Lompoc low security retaliated and engaged on Sereno's for what happened to the brothers next door in FCI. The mandate was a smart move because the way the MA did it was they told SIS that 20 Nordanios were allowed on each yard prior to skip arriving to the feds. 250 to 350 Serenios each yard and the most was 20 homies, but the MA always told Serenios to leave the homies alone. They promised the administration peace as long as we didn't pass the 20 homie threshold. We weren't a threat. 20 to 250 or 350, the MA wanted to spread out away from our elders. There was rumors of Cali Car in the 90s when the homies barely started going to the feds and a lot of homies falling into MA propaganda. Sickening, bro. Skip and them needed to come rewrite history and bring us in together away from the other dudes in school and pull and establish our people nationwide. Now every yard has at least two or more C's each yard, a lot of unity and harmony. The way the feds is, we don't have to be in yard all day. We have 
we have unity day every Saturday, a big feast taking care of our people like we're supposed to. No homie does bad. The unfortunate get blessed. All of us soldados do what's supposed to be done, and there's never people fighting for the keys to a yard. Also in July of 08, also in the July of 08 mandate, there's no tolerance for alcohol and drugs, not even weed. We don't gamble. Therefore, the administration likes our get down and a lot of times request to give us yards they open because they like our get down. The Serenos are using drugs. They brag how their big homies used to be so high on the block that they were sleepwalking. Anyway, you know, that's that's the that's the you know, that individual's particular outlook of the situation, which historically a lot of those events, to my knowledge, are very accurate. I obviously wasn't there, so I can't speak for all of them, but I, I know of each of those incidents that he discussed. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that explains why the state the state is able to do these end of hostilities, but there's still a problem in the feds. I mean, that's a general breakdown as to how there's still animosity there. Well, I, I don't think if you really think about it, bro, like up until Operation Black Widow, there wasn't that many carnales that were in the feds, bro. Mm-hmm. I think you. I think you had Pony Boy, Robert Modest. You had uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Mad Dog. Yeah. And then you had the, the, the other OG man. Tarzan. Tarzan. Besides that, they didn't have numbers, man. So I yeah. mean, it seemed like like when all these carnales got sent to the feds, man, they were not the MA and the Sudanians weren't prepared for it. I mean, they, they've had a set, set program for years with administration only allowing twenty northerners to come to these yards. Yeah. And they messed up. They messed up trying to tell Skip that here's your ultimatum: either get rid of them, or that's gonna be all bad, bro. Yeah, you, you can't I mean? tell Skip nothing. So it, it's kind of, you know, it's it's a unique situation because I mean that's not going to change anything. And, and what they figured out was what the California Department of Corrections never really did was they never separated us. They they did separate the NF and M at one time in the seventies. We know that, right? But as far as the eighties and nineties, they always the North Daniels and Sudan was on yards and we'd have to fight for yards. We'd have to fight for things. We'd always be low in numbers. The same thing that is occurring in the feds. It almost seems like history is repeating itself in the feds. The same things that we used to have to fight for in the eighties and nineties is the same thing that now they're fighting for in the feds. Yeah. Whereas before you had certain individuals, you didn't have people who had a lot of clutch that were there so that they were more in compliance with whatever dictates and mandates were being forced upon them. You know what I'm saying? You get some individuals like Skip, Corny, Pinky, you know what I'm saying? Tex, Tibbs, Quete, all these dudes, man. These dudes are militant, disciplined, and they are very strategic. So they strategically planned all this when they hit the feds. And so now it makes sense. It seems like like both factions are, are on do, uh, two different pages. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But that's the difference between the, the uh, state NF and federal NF is that basically there's not supposed to, they don't want no two factions. They want one faction. The MA has two different factions. They have a federal faction and they have a state faction. The state takes care of the state. The feds takes care of the feds. Therefore, that's why all these conflicts are, are arising. And based upon their actions, this, this is what I was also told by this person a little bit further. They went from really not having any yards to now having 16 yards in the feds, bro. You know yeah, that's saying? a nice size. I mean, they, they got to do it like that, too, because even if you have 20 dudes that are – you know, they're up there with the skip and, and the corny caliber as far as the 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 length they're willing to go to to show themselves. You know what I mean? And saying it in the nicest way I could possibly say it. If you have 20 and any other group has 250 to 350, there's nothing you could do. You could do a little bit of damage, but ultimately there's no way to win that. You know what I mean? It, it's just there's it's too many numbers. You know what I mean? So establishing them own yards with, you know, with like-minded or, or, or groups that are peaceful that's the way they're going to flourish man because they're going to run them yards bro you know what i mean without a doubt you know but the other thing that the person was telling me right he said that the uh the carnales and the feds are not doing too good financially you know what i'm saying so all, I'm sure, all those i'm all sure those that's going to change so tips that we heard about the Hey, sorry about that, guys. We had a small uh, technical difficulty real quick. Uh, go ahead, Flacco. So where do you think this this um, pushes the face state issue, state issue now, though? You know I mean, like, the state, they're able to coexist, but the feds are not. You know I mean, there's a, there's a, there has to be a middle ground here. 
Yeah, I think uh, to be totally honest with you, bro, that uh, it's not going to change anything as far as the state goes. I think they're, you know, the way they've been operating, they've been able to coexist for almost a decade now without any major incidents whatsoever. You know, they're all enjoying the freedoms of being out of them shoes and, you know, they're being able to accomplish a lot more as groups inside and outside of the walls because of being out of the shoe. And I don't think that they're going to allow whatever's going on in the feds. Like you said, you know, the, the gentlemen from down south, they have two separate factions and basically the north does now, too. You know what I mean? So, you know, while they're pushing one agenda in one facility, that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be like that in another system. And I think I don't think nothing's going to change in the state, my man. It's parallel when you're part of two different correctional systems. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Isn't that like isn't that like too big of an enterprise to try to maintain? I mean, to, to maintain its grasp on. If you really think about it, man. I mean, I'm just trying yeah. to be logical here. I'm You're trying right. to be practical. Yeah. It seems like if you're trying to run everything, you know, I mean, you could be anywhere. You could be all the way in in, in Lone Park. You could be in in Pennsylvania, uh, Louisiana. I mean, that's hard to maintain some type of order and control over over the revenue, over the. I regiment. agree. I agree, hundred percent. So you know, I I see where where the uh, internal turmoil is going man like you know what i mean and it's just with the action of of, of the ma being on a whole different page in the feds compared to the state they coexist but they are two different factions in, in the same sense therefore the state has no authority over the feds with the i mean the feds ma has no, no authority over the state right you get what i'm saying yeah so whatever's uh, going on yeah. the state, that should be a state issue whatever's going on the feds should be a fed issue that's that's ultimately what it seems like is going on because with, 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 you know, the, the combat that happened in the feds, it didn't trickle back over to the state, you know, and vice versa that I've ever heard of or seen, you know, it's been completely what th those guys are doing there versus what these guys are doing here. And that's the only way that the things will continue to work as far as the end of hostilities in the state level, in my opinion. All right, guys, I think I fixed the internet problem. Anyway, my bad, Flacco, go ahead. So what do you think about all this rumors, man? Um, someone got at me with, with a filter about the N NOR being deemed by the state. The NLR? NOR, NOR record. Oh, man, I don't know, man. I've, I've seen a little bit of stuff about that. I really don't know a lot about them, and I was actually going to do some research on that. I don't I don't have no opinion because I don't know nothing about them, brother. You know, it seems like if if – if the feds should be taking care of the feds and state should be taking care of the state, then these guys in are in Mexico based. That's where their alliance is at. You right. And that's where the revenue is coming in for. You would think that would be like a federal uh, stronghold, a federal commitment. I don't know, man. This stuff is starting to get kind of confusing, man. But yeah, this information we got, man, it just, it's, it's, like I said, it makes sense to why they have such a strong stance on this end to all hostilities. But at the same token, the federal guys need to realize that. They're not in the state no more. It's right. just two different. It's two different entities. You know what I mean? Yeah. Two different parties. I think any hope of that being reconciled, man, the 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 farther it goes, the less likely it is, man. I really don't think it's very likely, but uh, definitely the longer it goes without them reaching some type type of reconciliation, bro, it's it's not gonna. It's not good, you know. Another another thing that this 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 individual told me um, that I was talking to right was. They don't use the word homie anymore in there or North Daniel. They're, they all call each other brothers now. Right. That's the term that he, he was using, man. And, and and the same thing that they said with any bulldogs that hit the line, he said that either they get in line with the program and they function just as if under all North Daniel guidelines, yeah. rules, regulations, or they get on. That's their choice. But they're not going right. to come in using drugs. Or they're not going to come in uh, uh, wolfing. They're not going to come in conducting themselves with anything else but how the North Daniel is programmed. Right. They said that there, there was a lot of unity, though. There was a lot of respect, man. So it's kind of it's kind of a trip, right? On one side, you have the state where there's, you know, they're still feuding with the Bulldogs and they're out there programming with the MA. Then you have the feds where they're out there, you know what I mean, programming now with Bulldogs, but they're still warm with the MA. So it's like you got two things that are just kind of productive. You know what I mean, I mean, it'd be great for everybody just to get along, <laughs> you know, and be able to live and do their time and just not yeah. have these issues, man. But it's hey, the longer it goes with the separation between the two, the 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 worse it's gonna get, bro. You know, it, it might just be to the point where there just has to be two different divisions, you know. 
You know, I think that's the only solution, to be honest with you. you know I mean? Yeah, it's got to be. There's too many conflicts of interest otherwise. You know, you, 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 can't, you can't expect, you know, what, what's in the guidelines is parallel to other pintas. You can't be parallel to other pintas if they're not under the same Department of Operations manual. You know what I'm saying? Like the DOM. The yep. beds have a whole different system. So you have a whole different way of wiggling. You have a whole different group you have to deal with. And I thought it was kind of interesting that, that they align with all Texas cars. Yeah. You know, Texas Syndicate, Texas uh, MO, um, as well as the Latin, Latin, uh, Latin Kings and other factions. So they're, they're building alliances in there, man. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and what I tripped off too was is he said that the, the staff there – have a little bit more respect towards the North Daniels in there because of how they program with like not the drug use, not the gambling, not, not the alcohol. So they're a lot less creating problems on these yards. Yeah. You know, whereas in the state, they would never, they would have never done that because it wasn't possible because there wasn't enough prisons to send us to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Always, man, they, you know, their, their goal is always to be as low profile and leave as small of a footprint as possible, man, you know, and, a lot of times in the state, you know, the, the administration would look at that as they think that they're cool or untouchable maybe or whatever, but maybe the feds recognize that, you know, that program results in the least amount of conflict, you know, which it does, you know, the less you engage in, you know, let's just call it negative activities, the less negative repercussions are going to come from that, less violence, less work, you know. Well, it just shows it just shows the state all along has tried to fuel these wars. You just did the one on the bulldogs where they were purposely putting bulldogs out there knowing they were gonna get attacked. Yeah. The feds, you get off in the feds enough, they separate you. You know what I'm saying? How come hey. for how come for how come for over 30 some years they still had us out there in the main line trying to kill each other? Yeah. It makes no sense. When I was reading that bulldog thing the other day, bro, I I couldn't help but laugh on 45 different occasions. It's like when I ask you what the, the definition of insanity was, it's like, hey, figure it out, man. All you're doing, you know what's going to happen. And that's like you're an active participant in it by allowing that to continue. You know what I mean? They're actively participating man, they, in that violence, bro. Bro, they used to do that stuff to us all the time in the 90s. Bro. Yeah, they used to bro. That means, this was a time of war and battle, man. They would purposely, especially if you were a young kid, man, they would purposely send you down south, man. Places like Sentinella, Calipatria, you know what I'm saying? All kinds of facilities down there. And back then what would happen was is they would tell certain homeboys, hey, either you keep your shirt on, you know what I mean? Don't rep what, and, and do, do as we told, or you or they're going to whack you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People forget. Those are the things that we used to fight for on, on those yards, man, was to have, have existence, man. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, we're not going to put on our shirt. We're going to do what we want to do. And it's yeah. the same type of mentality that, that was happening back in the 80s and 90s towards us because it was hard sometimes. When you got sent down south and you were only on a yard with seven, eight homeboys, you already knew what time it was. You weren't going to be on that yard that long. They were doing the same thing in the feds for a minute. They were trying to put those dictates and mandates like, look, you guys can't have your shirts off. You have to do this and that. Your numbers yeah. can only get up to 20. You know what I'm saying? All strategic and numbers. So from from talking to this dude, I kind of I got a more of a feel of why. I always wondered, like we've had people discuss saying, oh, the feds are jealous because they can't be out there in the main lines. Well, they have their own yards now. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think it has to do anything with that. I think it has to do with, with their journey, what they've experienced. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know? I agree. You know what I'm saying? I mean, can you imagine, can you imagine these these dudes tell people, hey, skip got to get off the yard? <laughs> You know, hey, hey Corny, man. you gotta leave your shirt on. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's not gonna happen, man. No. You know what I'm saying? It's not gonna happen, man. You know, so there know. it is. There now they're separated though. And I really wasn't. I knew that they had yards, but I thought maybe they had Sudanos on these yards still. I did not know that they separated them entirely in the feds. Did you know that? Yeah. I've I've heard rumors of it, but I there was no way at the time for me to check the accuracy of that. You know what I mean? But hey, it makes sense after hearing, you know, that gentleman you spoke to, bro. It makes perfect sense, you know. So, and I'm not surprised, man. The, the feds don't want them issues, you know what I'm saying? They they they'd rather it's not like the state, man. They'd rather have peace and not have to, you know, clean up no bloodshed and all that stuff. They're trying to run a smooth program, man. It's the feds. California has always been. They've always been antagonists in 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 the in the damn violence, bro. They've always had their hand in it, man. 
So this this is Skip Spark though. Skip is is responsible for let's let's keep it real, man. I mean this is this is history in the feds. Skip is responsible for the for the Northerners to have their own yards now. No you doubt. And then the, the funny thing about it, right? Not it's not even funny. The real thing about this is what he's been able to obtain for them in the feds is what we were trying to obtain for ourselves in the state. Right. We wanted our own yards, man. People forget about that, man. And so Skip has told these guys that everything that he experienced when he went through as one of the first first North Daniels at that time that came into the system, right? Yeah. You know what I'm the sacrifices that he went through, he said that this is just like what he went through in his history. Right. When he hit the system in the 80s. I, this was this that was told to me word for word from this individual, man. I got to talk to him a little bit more, and he said it, it's a beautiful thing. They don't they don't have no threats from the oppositions or interference, man. Uh, they're able to program these yards, they're able to enjoy, they're able to spread. You know, nobody's going without, man. So they've acquired the goal that they that they seek. You know what I'm saying? Now they're trying to acquire the other goal, control of everything, bro. Yeah. Hey, you know, uh, you know, Skip and Corny Pinky, you know, all them guys in the feds, man, they're OGs. They're extremely intelligent. We can't take that away from them. You know that they're really pumping up their their closest allies, too. You know what I mean? And and, and acquiring new networking abilities and stuff like that with the syndicatos, with with the the Texas MA, with the Latin Kings, because if you notice, man, they're cool with the gangster disciples as well as the Latin Kings. And those are, those are two very different groups. One of them flies under the folks umbrella in Chicago. One of them flies under the people. And historically they don't get along whatsoever. It's almost similar to the North and South on site. Folks are on site with people, gangs, you know what I mean? Forks up, forks down, six point crowns, five point crowns, whatever the case might be. But they're, they're developing a huge networking ability because even so even if they don't have things established in a particular city with northerners there's only one or two northerners there well now them associations might allow them to to be able to build even more so in places in the midwest where the people and the folks nation are really really strong you know what i mean be like yeah. oh hey, who are these guys they're called nortenos oh man we were in the in the feds with some of their big homies they're cool man help them guys out so they're not stupid bro they they know what they're doing man you know, it's like like one of the bonds, you know, as, as far as trying to, you know, aid all those of that to say as well as any other minority with our cause. You got it. It's not to get it's not to get them as allies, it's to neutralize them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the key thing that we teach teach people in their schooling was okay, we don't have to get them as friends, you know what I'm saying? Or in alliance with us or fighting our fight. But if they're not a threat to us and we can neutralize them, then we're winning. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We can force, we can function under the radar. Yep. And, and that's what you're seeing here. You know I mean, I mean, the feds is a tricky game, man. And I think that they're starting to figure it out. You know oh, they man? will. If they haven't yet, <laughs> if they haven't figured out everything yet, you know, they're every day, man, they're, they're putting their brains to work, bro, of how to do their thing, man. Right on. Well, man, that's a, man, that's kind of a breakdown of basically how Skip established oh. main lines in the feds, you know? Yeah. Straight up. I mean, you got to give the man his, his due respect. He's about that action. And he's not going to put his shirt on. <laughs> it's just, you, you know what I mean? Straight up. And, he's, and, he, and if he's leaving the yard, he's leaving his yard on his terms. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. All right, you guys, man. It's your boy Rojo, man, as always, with the big Flacco, man. And uh, we're going to drop this right now, man. It's, uh, what is it, Monday? We'll be dropping this immediately. And maybe one of us will holler at you guys later on the live. Much love and respect, everybody.